How do you respond to constructive criticism, right? When someone comes to you and they give you a loving word and say, you know what, you really need to fix this in your life. You know, how does that work out? Or better yet, how does it work when you give someone constructive criticism? Is there been points in your life where you've shared something with someone out of love to try to help them and it pushed them further away? Or even ostracized yourself from them because they got angry? So today we're going to talk about how we handle that form of criticism. Hi, I'm Shauna and this is Pete with Golly Family Discipleship and we are ordained ministers with the Church of God. And we invite you into our home every day and just ask you to uh, do discipleship and study the Bible with us. Uh, today we're actually on 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verses 10 and 11. It's kind of part two. We, we did some of this yesterday, but it is absolutely worth doing again um, in depth. So I'm going to read the scripture to you in the NIV. And it says, Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret, but worldly sorrow brings death. See what this godly sorrow has produced in you, what earnestness, what eagerness to clear yourselves, what indignation, what alarm, what longing, what concern, what readiness to see justice done. At every point you have proved yourself to be innocent in this matter. So the thing that we see here is that um, when the truth about ourselves is revealed, you can have one or two responses, a godly response mm -hmm. or a worldly response. Mm -hmm. uh, it can incite you to repent and be drawn closer to God, or it can anger you, and it can make you frustrated that someone would have the gall or audacity to point out something that you did wrong. It's easy to see what the Apostle Paul's goal was here. You know, in... Um the previous scripture in verse 9, he actually is like, you know, I'm not sorry for what I said. And then in verses 10 and 11, he explains, I'm not sorry because I told you the truth because I seen you headed down a path of destruction. And I knew that you needed some guidance to uh, continue in your salvation. It brought about that godly sorrow that led to repentance. And that's what you want in, in your life and in someone else's life because I know myself, that once the revelation came to me that, hey, you're separated from God, you're not doing things right, mm -hmm. then it, it broke me, right? It brung sorrow into my life because I wanted to be connected to God. Uh, I knew that uh, that relationship was there and I wanted to uh, re restore that relationship that I had destroyed with my sinful actions. Yeah. So it brought repentance into my heart. What did I do? I said, I'm not gonna be this way anymore. But God, I need your help. Jesus, I need you to come in and help me, to empower me. To I accept your sacrifice, but I need your Holy Spirit to come in to guide, direct, and lead me on a daily basis. The scripture tells us that they will know the truth and the truth will set them free. Um, and what if we are in the Apostle Paul's shoes? What are if we are the one that God is calling to deliver the truth to a people because they need salvation through godly sorrow and repentance? I think about the story that even if you're not a Christian or you wasn't raised in church, you have heard of Jonah and the well. You know, the Bible tells sure. us about Yeah, wow. The Bible tells us about Jonah and that God <coughs> told him, he said, I want you to go to Nineveh, those people, their sins have come before me. I want them to repent. I want them to turn back to me, to turn to me, and for them to have a godly sorrow. And um, Jonah, honestly, just, he didn't have the love in his heart for the people of Nineveh. He didn't think that they deserved the um, forgiveness and the mercy and grace that God was so willing to he give. He thought they deserved to be punished. Yeah. Go they, ahead and let them die. Yeah, just, just destroy them all, Lord. Uh, but what happened to Jonah? You know, Jonah, he bought him a ticket to Tarshish, and he was going the other way. But during that time, God sent a storm on the seas, and he was thrown into the sea by, by his own um, advancement. And he was swallowed by a great fish. And he spent three days in the belly of this fish. And during that time, he realized that he had to deliver the truth to these people because God desired uh, a relationship, reconciliation with these people. Um, has God called you to be a Jonah in a, a situation? Maybe you have a Nineveh that you've been sent to. Uh, do you have the love and the understanding in your heart that there is someone out there that needs 
the mercy and the grace of God in order for them to escape the perils of hell. Or maybe you're an individual that God has sent a Jonah to, and you've been unreceptive, unwilling to hear this message, and your heart's been hardened, and you've been pushing this individual away, and when the phone rings or you see him in public, you're like, oh no, there Let's they are. Let's go down the other aisle. There they are again. But in actuality, they're telling you the truth, and you're hiding from the truth. And, 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 you know, those individuals, maybe you need to open yourself back up to those individuals and allow them in, allow them to, to lead you to godly repentance. That's exactly what Nineveh did. The people of Nineveh, they heard the truth, they received it, and they repented of what they had done. And God gave them the mercy and grace that he, um, that he wanted to give them. And, and he'll give us too. That's right. That's exactly what God will do for you. He will give you the mercy and the grace, and he will forgive you, and he will set you on the right path. So today we're just going to say uh, we want to challenge you to do two things. Be bold. When God gives you a message for an individual or uh, something, give it in love and boldness. Yes. But also be receptive. Mm -hmm. When someone gives you a bold message in love, receive it, examine it. And we're not saying everything is from God. The Bible says the way the spirits and see. But when you pray about it, whenever you ask God and it reveals to your heart, yes, that's true, then, then you need to be the repentant one. Absolutely. Uh, but we want to encourage you to continue to read the scripture. Remember this week we are on 2 Corinthians chapter 7. And uh, we also want to encourage you to exalt God, encounter God, edify yourself with the reading of the word, and engage the world for Christ. Every day. Every day. Right. And we love you. And until next time, God bless. God bless you.